Okay, how you guys doing? I just thought that, you know, um, I was about to take a rest, but some of my students really wanted me to show complete the part of complex numbers, so I thought I'd just do a quick one. It's about quite late at night now. I'm not sure about time over there, but I'll just quickly go through some of the additional properties of complex numbers. Okay, I must say that the previous section, I kind of missed out uh, something. I missed out the mathematical rigor in the treatment that I gave towards complex numbers. And because of that, for this section, I'm gonna be extra careful on the rigor, on the mathematics and the arithmetic involved to really kind of enforce the properties of complex numbers. Now, I know sometimes for high school or when you're doing problems in AP subjects, you kind of lose the interest in the proofs and all that. But however, as being a mathematician, being somebody that's interested in mathematics, I believe that the proof is always very important. Moreover, the proofs also allow you to really see the underlying working of the theory and the principle that, that is given towards you. So that's just my small view about mathematical proof. And in light of that, I'm going to do the same for the complex numbers. Okay, so we've got a complex number z, and we, be, and we put it as a plus bi, where a and b are real. Okay, then later we show that z is equals to r cosine theta plus i sine theta using the polar form of a complex number in the complex plane with the real and imaginary axis taking place with the y x and y axis so we got the axis like that real and imaginary and the complex number z is over here and we later matched up a to be this length b to be this length and r is the magnitude of the complex number and theta is the angle in which the ray from the complex number for, uh, goes to the origin forms with the real axis the ray from the complex number to the origin forms with the real axis the angle so that is the the theta over here so let's just solidify some terms a bit when I want to say the magnitude of C the notation is going to be like that or you can just simply put it as this and this equals to r, the magnitude or the modulus of z. And then for theta, that is called the argument. So a way to note that tau is a r g zero. I'm sorry, the argument of z is equal to theta over here, like this. Simple enough. Just some notation because it come in handy for the proofs that we're gonna show in the subsequent sections. Okay. So now this is all good. You know, this is all fine. Then we move on to this part where we wrote something like that, okay? And we say that the argument of, sorry, the modulus of complex number z times with z or the magnitude is equals to r1, r2. And also using the notation that I showed you just now, the argument of z times z is equals to theta 1 add up with theta 2. And later we also show that the, it goes something like that. The one complex number is here, another complex number is here. And the third complex number, the magnitude is R1 times R2. And the argument is the angles, these two angles add up together. That will be the angle here. So when I look at it, you might just take this result as it is because we have shown this using what we like to call Euler's formula a very powerful and ingenious formula which it goes like this however then later we're gonna we show like that times e i theta equals to e 2 i theta or i 2 theta which is basically the argument add up together however let's just assume that we did not have this formula to begin with and we somehow needed to show this result and this result because honestly, I did not know which one came first. I would like to know in terms of mathematical history whether Euler came first so that you could use this result to show this or Euler didn't come first such that when, you were when they were developing the field of complex numbers, they needed another way to show this result and this result over here. So can you think of a way? Well, it definitely has to start from here, okay? And we're going to use something that perhaps you are studying in high school or everybody's going to study that is trigonometry identities. Okay, so let's just see what we have. Z is equals to R1 
cosine, let's denote it as theta 1, add up with i sine theta 2. It's theta 1, sorry, theta 1, theta 1 here. The complex number z. Okay? And then we've got another number which is w is equals to r2 cosine theta 1, theta 2, add up with i sine theta 2. Okay, these are two complex numbers and we're going to multiply them together and we have to show that the magnitude or the modulus is r1 times r2 and the argument is theta1 times theta2. Okay, I forgive me that I've been using modulus and, and magnitude interchangeably. Okay, but they mean the same thing. Okay, the magnitude and the modulus mean the same thing and the argument is the angle. So right now, I try at best to say magnitude. Okay, but I, I mean the same thing. So let's just multiply them together. So, and the commutative principle of multiplication we use all the time is this multiplied by this, this is multiplied by this. So we'll just bring the constants one side going like that. And now we're gonna multiply this, just like how we multiply polynomials. This one will go with here, this one will go with here, this one will go with here, this one will go with here. So it's gonna be quite a long sentence, but just bear with me. Cosine theta one times cosine theta two. Okay, this multiply with this, and then this will multiply with this. So we go add up with cosine theta one times i sine theta two. Okay, then after that we go from here and we multiply this one, this one, this one, this one. So we go add up, I'll just write it down here, which is i sine theta 1 times with cosine theta 2. And then from here to here. Now, let's, we have to be careful a bit because i is square root of minus 1. So if this times this, we get minus over here. And it's sine theta 1 times sine theta 2. Okay, quite a long statement, but we still need that to sh give the mathematical rigor. So, as you can see, this one seems to be quite a long statement, and really, we need to really do some manipulation from this. So, like I was saying before, if you have been learning trigonometry then, or if you're learning trigonometry now, you're going to come across something called the additional formula. Now, there's a lot of ways to remember it, but this is usually my way. We go sine theta 1, add up with sine theta 2, sine theta 1 minus theta 2 then we go cosine theta 1 add up with cosine 2 okay then it's equal 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 then over here we got it goes like sine sine cos cos sine sine cos cos sine cos cos sine sine cos cos sine sine being add minus minus add okay you just put, pull out a formula sheet you will know what I mean but if you want a way to think about it, that's how I do it over here. So down here, it is go sine theta 1, cos theta 1, and then we add up with cos theta 2, sine theta 2. Okay, this is going to be minus, and then when you move up to here, it's cos theta 1, cos theta 2, minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Cos, cos, sine, sine, 1, sorry, this is 2 over here. Yes, sorry, this is, yeah, my mistake. Okay, this is 1 and 2. Okay, so it goes cos, sine, cos, cos, sine, cos, cos, sine, sine, and 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay, so drawing a comparison with over here, let's see what we got. Now, remember when dealing with complex numbers, we try our best to put the real part on one side and put the complex part on the other side. So the real part is over here. Cos theta 1 times cos theta 2 plus, sorry, minus sine theta 1 times sine theta 2. This is the real part and the imaginary part is over here. Okay, but what do we know? Look, cos theta 1 times cos theta 2 over here, then we, we minus that with sine theta 1, sine theta 2, which is over here. So this, the real part is gonna be equal to this, and the imaginary part is sine cos, cos sine, when we bring the imaginary number to one side. We just put the imaginary one, number one side, factor it out, and then deal with the trigonometry identities, which will give us the one over here, sine cos, cos sine. So basically it's a real part, this is the measure.